I tag um, like Randy or whatever. Ready? You're amazing. Randy Grossman, Randy Levin. Who else on the committee? Uh, Stephanie Cox. Who? Stell? One do you think you want into the waiting room for this meeting? Huh? That's awesome. It's good to be on the waiting room. So they're going to see that? No, I'm going to call them Okay, because it's there. Yeah. Rashad, do you want to Is this good for you? Can I let people in? <laughs> I don't want people waiting. Can we get into the room? Oh, I'm doing 29. Um, I'm admitting all. Hi. Hi, everyone. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Hi, Hi Robin. Hi, Hi. Hi Robin. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. Let's see. It's so awesome to see you all. Hi, Heath. How are you? Hi. Very good. How are you? Hey, Rona. How you doing? Hi, Heath. Hi, Lori. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Jackie's in the house. So, so awesome. <laughs> Jackie's see, in the house. To see everybody. I don't Hi. see this. Should I? Uh, Hi, Jeffrey. Hi, Esther. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Hi, Hello. Hi. This is so much fun. Hi, Sue. I lost. I lost you. So, so great to see everyone. By the way, I'm lucky. I never get to be part of the culinary club. Tonight, I get to be part of it as I'm the cameraman. I don't see. I don't see. I don't see. Oh. We lost you. I don't know anything about you. Okay. Anna, can you hear me? 
I'm going to. Uh... Somebody needs to turn off their. Hi, Sharon. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute everybody now just so that we can hear clearly. Um, and then later we'll do some chatting. Just first, I want to start off with a Torah thought. So obviously, it's uh, Rabbi Denver's way. Hi everybody! I heard a bunch of people answered. So hi everyone! Welcome again. Um, so we all know, of course, this month. But what a lot. Can can what's the water? What's the water? Watch my cable. I can't hear anything. Neither can I. How about now? Can you hear me now? Yes? Good? Okay. Okay, sorry about that. Let's start again. Um, but what this month, um, today is Rosh Chodesh Nisan, the first day of the Hebrew month of Nisan. And the Talmud tells us that in Nisan, we were redeemed from the first exile. And in Nisan, in the future, we'll once again be redeemed from this, um, this exile that we're currently in. And at least for the first time in my life, it's the first time that I've really experienced this concept of confinement and slavery in a whole, whole deeper level with all the restrictions that we're dealing with. Um, and just all the uncertainty and lack of control that we're experiencing in our lives is very much likened to what the Jews must have experienced in, in Egypt, in Mitzrayim. And um, before even Pesach, uh, actually next week, Thursday, is my birthday. And a lot of you know, a lot of you don't know, but I actually have a second name. And my second name is Miriam. And the reason why my second name is Miriam is because I was born on Ches Nisan, the eighth day of the month of Nisan, and I was named at the next, which was a Tuesday, and I was named at the next Torah reading on a Thursday, um, and that day, Thursday, Yud Nisan, the 10th of the month of Nisan, is the uh, passing, the anniversary of the passing, the yard site of Miriam, Moshe's brother, Moshe's sister, um, the prophetess, and Miriam plays an exceptional role in the story of the Exodus. Um, she was the one, first of all, that in the beginning, at the very beginning of the story, when Paro had originally decreed that all of the babies should be thrown into the Nile River, um, her parents, um, her father, Amram, and her mother, Yochavet, which were leaders of the Jewish people at that time, um, decreed and said that all men and women should separate and not bring any more children into this world, because why, would, why should children be born into such terrible, horrendous circumstances? And Miriam, who was just a girl at that time, actually turned to her parents and said, what you're doing is actually worse than what Paro is doing, because Paro's decree is only against the boys, but you're also stopping all, you know, all, all female children from being born as well. And her parents actually listened to her um, and got remarried, and from there, Moshe was born. Later on in the story, once the Jewish people cross the the, the Yamsuf, once they crossed the Red Sea, it says that all the women took out their tambourines and they began to sing and dance and, you know, praise Hashem for saving them, for rescuing them. Now, if they ran out of Mitzrayim, they ran out of Egypt because they did not have time for the dough to rise on their backs, why on earth do they have tambourines, right? Like when we're finally told that we don't have to be, you know, in our homes anymore on our own, I bet you none of us are going to be running outside with our tambourines. I don't know what we're going to run and do, but we're definitely not going to be running out with tambourines. Um, and the, the Talmud explains that why do they have these tambourines? Because Miriam 
would go around talking to the woman and inspiring them or reminding them that guess what? God promised that he is going to take us out of here. And when he takes us out of there, we're going to want to sing and praise and dance and, and rejoice in, 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 our, in the Hashem saving us. So we need to be ready and we need to have our tabarines um, ready and packed for any moment God coming and, and redeeming us. And the same thing is today. It's up, up to us, the Jewish woman, um, to have faith, even in trying times. And it's actually something that you see in the name of Miriam because her name, Miriam, the beginning Mar, actually means bitterness. And she, it's not that she was like totally um, aloof and not aware of the terrible circumstances that they were dealing with. No, in fact, she felt the pain of the exile, the pain of the exodus very, very deeply. But, and she was, she was hurt about it, but she refused to become bitter. And she would always remain positive and upbeat and inspiring other people. And that's yeah, our job to be positive, to be hopeful, to be optimistic, not to allow all the doom and negativity to kind of draw us down and to really, really know that at any moment, it says, Yeshua Hashem Karafai, and the salvation of Hashem can come in the blink of an eye. Hashem is going to take us out of the circumstances um, and not just, you know, the, the current circumstances, but really take us to the final, final um, redemption. It actually says that one in one of the, one of the, um, in your office. One of the prophecies, one of the prophecies that it says about the redemption is that we're all going to fly on eagles' wings to Jerusalem. Well, if somebody sent out a picture today of all the hundreds and hundreds of airplanes that are grounded, all ready and waiting um, to take us to Israel for the final, final gula. Anyways, without further ado, we still have to prepare for Pesach, so well, let's get cooking. I'm going to start off with. Um, we're going to make quite a few dishes tonight. I'm going to move this back and try to make sure that you see everything that I'm doing. Um, I'm going to start with the things that need, you know, more time. So the first dish we're going to be doing is some mock liver. So I have over here um, onions, and I just cut them. I didn't really dice them because the onions are going to be blended. So I just cut them in, um, you know, kind of uh, quarters, I guess, half circles, and then I cut them again. And I'm putting them onto the, um, yeah, onto the frying pan right over here. And I'm going to let that sit for a while to get nice and soft and brown. Um, so I'm going to turn this on. Get nice and soft and brown as we go. Um, after that, after I got that started, by the way, don't worry, everyone. I will send out all of these recipes. So you don't have to be scribbling or writing things down. Just enjoy and watch. Um, and I will send that to you um, at a later time. Next thing I'm going to start with is yeah. going to be, huh? Yeah. Next thing I'm going to start with is going to be um, the desserts, right? Because of course that's our favorite part of the meal. Um, but really because for our purposes, those are the things that take the longest to cook. So we're gonna be making two different desserts today. Um, one of them, uh, I just started making up pizza probably two years ago and everybody seems to love it. So um, we're gonna do that, which is a um, non-dairy cheesecake. And we're gonna do that by whipping up six eggs. So I have my blender set up over here, and I have my, uh, I already separated, you can bring closer, I already separated my, um, my egg whites and my yolks, we're going to use both of them, so there's no wasting, no worries, and I'm going to put that in over here, and I'm going to do that up, and while that's going, I'm going to add as a sip I'm going to add a cup of sugar. So we have a whole cup of sugar. I'm going to give it a minute to sip it. And then I'm going to add that in. Um, so I'm going to let that get a little, little, uh, you know, sip, and I'll pop it in the meantime and tell you what I'm going to do next. So what gives this recipe is um, consistency. And um, gives this recipe its cheese-like texture, even though it's not cheese, and so therefore we can serve it as a seder, it's actually mashed potatoes. Don't tell anybody, because then they're not going to eat it. But if they don't know that it has mashed potatoes, they'll think it's absolutely decadent cheesecake. So the trick with these mashed potatoes is that they have to be hot, otherwise they're not going to blend with the eggs and sugar well, and they also have to be very, very uh, finely mashed. So what I like to do is instead of using a masher, 
I actually use an immersion blender. So I'll show you how I do that. So these are just, just you know, off the oven. They're still hot. And I'm going to... Take my immersion blender, which is a really very, very handy for mashing potatoes. And I'm going to blend this. Yes. Um, just one more tip about the mashed potatoes. So normally when you mash potatoes, you kind of dump out all the water. But for this recipe, you can actually leave a little bit of the hot water that the potatoes get boiled with, because it makes them cream um, even better. So I'm gonna go back to the egg whites that are beating and add our sugar. Now that they're getting a little bit stiff, I'm gonna add our sugar to the egg. So I'm just adding it slowly because I want the egg white to get nice and stiff. So these um, are making a nice little individual dessert cup. You can make them just in a regular pan as well. But because the consistency is a little bit fragile, you have better luck with it coming out really nice and um, extremely texture when you do a nice little cup like that. So the whites are getting lighter and thicker. Just keep on adding a little bit at a time. You don't want to kind of um, make the egg whites really soft. So it may not be so clear now because this machine is on, but hopefully my machine comes off for the fire. Hi, Robin. Rebecca. Okay, but everyone can make sure that they stay muted because that interferes with my voice being heard. So everyone can make sure that they mute yourself um, so that this way everyone can hear. Um, you, can, you can type in the chat box um, if you want to say something, and this way everyone will hear and see what you said in the chat box, but it won't interfere um, with, you know, with everyone being able to hear. Okay, so I'm going to pull up my recipe over here. We did the egg whites. We added one cup of sugar. Next, we're going to add in two cups of mashed potatoes. But I'm going to pause for one second just to give the onions a stir so that they don't burn. I'm going to the fire. Put the fire over. It feels like it's kind of... <laughs> Okay, so those are getting nice and done. Another disclaimer is that I'm not actually using kosher for Pesach ingredients, saying that my kosher isn't kosher for Pesach yet. Um, I know I need to spend a double price on regular ingredients, but um, obviously everything that I'm using is you know, available on kosher for Pesach. So now I have my pot of mashed potatoes. I mashed, I cooked up here four potatoes, four medium potatoes, and that should give me approximately the right amount. I'm going to Take them right here, and while the mixture is growing, and we in one cup.
And then on the second top. Okay. go with that. There. Um, next I'm going to add in my egg yolks from before. And the last ingredient is going to be how you get back to the sure. I hope you all know that I'm only measuring three pieces. It's not like okay. So, anyways, our you don't want to oh, once it's blended, you want to use it. Because you don't want it to lose its foaminess or you lose its frothiness. And I'm just doing this in really, really small cups for now. So it's there. And so I'm just going to use this is getting wet. Get the power on. So I'm just going to use a uh, my tablespoon measure to get it in nice and easily because it doesn't really use a lot. But you can see as I'm picking it up, it's really uh, foamy. It's a really nice little cheese cup that everyone's gonna get. So I'm just gonna fill up a few for now. Now normally- I'm kind of listening, I'm just looking at the people's faces. But, um, now, being that I'm doing it in little ones, it's gonna bake just for about, um, just for about 15 minutes. It starts up on a higher temperature because you kind of want to get a little crust on the top. So you start it off on 375. Again, being that they're just teeny little cups, they'll just be 375 for 10 minutes and drop it down to 325 um, for about 15 minutes after that. If you're doing a full size, then you'll do 375 for a full 15 minutes and then 325 um, for about uh, 325 for 30 minutes after that. So I'll just make another one little more. Um, so there's different ways you can serve this. If you want, you can serve it with some fresh berries on the top. You know, we'll talk about that, I guess, once it comes out, so it can spill as I'm trying to do this. But I'm gonna wait till the oven heats up, because I preheat it, and then I'm gonna put that into the oven. So we're done with that. Um, the next the next dessert that we're gonna be doing is going to be another um, family favorite that we've been doing for many, many, many years, and that is poached pears. So over here I have some beautiful, um, some beautiful pears. I'll just make sure that the onions are in front of me over here. So I have some beautiful pears. Hi. <laughs> so here I have some beautiful um, pears. And I thought they were so beautiful, but they actually had brown skin, and my kids all refused to eat them. And I was like, there's something wrong with brown skin pears. So um, instead, we're going to make them into delicious poach pears, a beautiful, healthy um, dessert. So this needs, well, put it on this counter. Okay, so I have a, um, a small pot. Again, depending on how many pears, is going to depend on what size pot you need. Um, you're going to use two cups of wine, but of course you can always use more wine if you like. So we'll start with two cups of wine straight into the pot. Now you can make this as sweet or as not sweet as you like. It also depends on the wine you're using. So Rashi wine is, is sweet, um, but I'm also going to add just a little bit of sugar to that. Yeah. Here. Just a little bit of sugar. I'm going to do a half a cup of sugar. Next, I'm going to do um, you can do a tablespoon of lemon or two. I'm just going to do 
a few big squirts. And next, I'm going to add to it one, um, one cinnamon stick and a couple of cloves. Of course, if you do, don't like the, you know, the spiciness of the cloves and the cinnamon stick, don't add it in. And then I'm just going to put my peers into the combination. I'm going to uh, put them down like this so that they will get covered. And then I'm going to turn them midway so that both sides will turn a beautiful, nice red color. So I'm going to start this on a higher flame, um, probably like a medium high. And once it starts to just a, just a slight boil, I'm going to turn it down and let it simmer for a while. So I have this back here and turn on that on a medium high over there. We still have our onions going. Nice and slow, caramelized. This fire got too hot, so I'm gonna take it off. Okay, so now that we have our desserts going, the most important part of our meal, um, I see that my oven is hot. I see that my oven is um, hot, so I'm actually gonna stick in my uh, little cheesecakes. I'm going to turn on my timer because I never ever remember otherwise. Okay, so now we have that. Next on our list is going to be um, a really, really wonderfully simple recipe that I actually find my kids love, which is exciting because they don't usually love things. Um, so, and also, of course, we know that we have the traditional gefilte fish, but not everyone really loves the culture. So this is a way that you can, um, that you can, should you hear me? Okay. Here. So this is a way that you can um, dress up the gefilte fish and make it really taste very, very different than it normally does. Um, you can also um, make this very simply, or you can make it a little bit more gourmet. So I just had my uh, gefilte fish sitting out on my counter for a couple of maybe 15 minutes or so so it's, it's still frozen but it's just a little bit more manageable um, and I'm going to take out a big sharp knife and I'm going to cut my roll into 10 slices just like that so I'm able to cut it but it's still frozen and it's not getting mushy and disgusting all over the place And then I'm going to put these on to uh, my frying pan, which is already heated up on a medium low heat. And I'm going to um, let them fry for about four minutes on each side. So just pick up the whole, pick up the whole uh, roll over here. The oil is already hot from before. Too hot probably, but I'm going to it anyways. And just going to put my and once they eat that, we have a little fall. Okay, so I have the, so I have all of my um just turn it off now. Okay. Sorry about that. We back or we'll see later. Okay, so I have my um, all my gefilte fish sliced nicely in my pan over here, um, and I'm just gonna have it on a three. It's a big burner, but it's on a three big flame, but it's on a three. I'm just gonna let it. Um, fry up over here. I want to get a nice, a nice crust. I want it to be nice and crusty on the outside. Obviously, I don't want to burn it, um, but just get a nice crust. So I'm going to leave that there. Now you could just serve them just like this. You fry them on both sides, and they're little uh, fish cakes, and they're a great snack, and they're you know just easy on the go, especially um, you know pace off when it's hard to find things to eat for lunch or whatever it is. This is a great food that really doesn't have that good filter fish taste that a lot of us may not like. And it's quick and easy, and there's some protein. But if you want to serve it for the Seder, you may want to do something a little bit more gourmet. Now, even though your Seder may be all alone this year, 
it's still Pesach and we still want to make and celebrate the holidays in you know, a really beautiful festive way. And one of the ways we can do that is by still making delicious foods, even though maybe just us um, all alone, or maybe just us and a few, um, you know, a few people in our family. So what I have prepared for, you know, to make this fish cakes a little bit more gourmet and the way that you can serve it is just to have them out individually on everyone's plate and make a um, little bit of mango salsa to go with it. And just put a scoop of that right on the top. So I'll tell you what I have in here. This. Um, so in this salsa, I have. Um, I'll, 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 you know, I'll, I'll send you the the amounts. But we have mango, red onion, cilantro, um, jalapeno, and uh, lime juice. Lots of lime juice. I didn't actually uh, put any salt or anything in it yet, and I'm going to add that to it. And while I do that, I'm going to show you a great little trick for cutting mango. So I cut one in here already, but this one's a little bit hard. But if you just slice it down the sides like that, and you make some nice lines in it, just like that, just like that, just like that, just like that, just like that. And then you take your spoon and push it along and you get your nice, um, you know, your nice uh, little cubes, which is usually hard to get. This one is not a super ripe mango. And so it's not coming out as nicely as it normally does. The first mango I used in here just came right out, which was, you know, nice. Okay, so here, here we have a little mango salsa. You want to make this a little bit in advance because you want all of the delicious um you know sweet and sharp flavors to really come together mm -hmm. and oh, the timer that i'll be keeping so i'm going to turn it down now to 325. which goes on boil Okay, so that's our mango salsa over here. So the way that I would serve it, I would let, let the sit and marinate, let the flavors come together, um, and put, serve each one individually on a plate with this, um, you know, the, the fish on the bottom. The fish on the bottom and the mango salsa, a scoop of the mango salsa on the top, or a scoop of the mango salsa on the side. So this is kind of how you want it to get it. You can even do a little bit of a darker crust. You just have a lot going on, so I don't want to burn it, but if you can even let it go a little bit longer and have it really nice and crispy. And this kind of takes away the gefilte fishiness from it, I find, at least. It makes it um, really, really delicious. So we'll leave that for another minute. Um, it looks like our onions are finally done. So our onions are going to be used for um, what every good Seder needs, which is a mock liver recipe. And it's amazing how many versions and variations you can really find for mock liver. But the one that we're going to do is going to be with, um, uh, you know, sauteed onions, with um, hard boiled eggs. A huge shout out to Ox, to Cindy Amistro for watching the kids while um, we do this video. It's usually not so fun. Um, okay, so this is going to be into my food processor. So this I'm putting here into the food processor. I want all the oil in as well. I don't want to leave the oil out because oil gives flavor. Okay, so we have that. I'm going to just find that again in a minute. This is not. And I'm going to add to there six. Here, I'm going to add to there six hard boiled eggs. So I throw those all in. I cook them before. I'm going to add to there some salt. A lot of salt. 
And I'm gonna add some here some pepper. Um, by the way, in case anyone's worried, I was actually out shopping today and everything, I was in Sam's, I was in Walmart and the shelves really seemed to be nicely stocked. Um, I was able to get everything I needed. So if you haven't been out, don't worry. You'll be able to find the things you need. And if you're missing something, please let me know because I do have um, a lot of stuff at home. So just let me know. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add one cup of um, walnuts. Just getting a cup measure. One cup of walnuts. Here. We're going in there. I'm just going to double check my recipe, make sure I didn't forget anything. Over here, we have our onion, we have hard boiled eggs, we have our walnuts, we have our salt, our pepper, and I'm going to add a little bit of sugar. Now I want this to be nice and fine, but I'm gonna hold it just oops, I think I have a plug before. So let's do that. Up. Here we go. For a beautiful, 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 beautiful um, mock chop liver, which is delicious and a really, I don't know, a staple part of our Pesach, at least. Um, I actually saw a great recipe for like Pesach crackers and kiffles that I'm, I'm happy to send out. I was going to make it, I just thought it was a little bit too much time to keep everybody on. But here we have a really yummy, delicious um, mock chocolate. So that's an important part of the Seder. Um, and I'm going to go check on our fish over there, making sure that they don't cook. So I'm gonna, again, if I was just doing this at home, if I was just doing this on my own, I would leave it another minute or two, but I don't wanna burn it because that wouldn't be very good. So I'm just gonna take them off now. You could put a paper towel underneath to let them soak out, but there's that for now. Okay, there we go. We have our risotto fish. So just to, uh, just to show you, I'll put, put out a plate and show you what I had in mind about how to serve it. Give me one second. We have a plate and we have our salsa. And you can serve it um, individually, one on each plate. Take your salsa, you can put it on the side. Well, I will do it on the top. And look at that. Now your filter fish looks so walking. Mm -hmm. So now your filter fish looks really nice and gourmet. Um, like that. Here we go. Um, and all it is is filter fish. Look at that. Ta da! Okay, thank you. Amy. It's beautiful. <laughs> Delicious to build a machine. You'll get it to eat it after, <laughs> which, I'm, uh, which I'm sure I like. Okay, next, our next recipe. Um, I didn't want to do any kind of meat dish because um, obviously it really can, you know, it, you know, it takes too long to cook and all of that. So I'm going to show you a really yummy chicken breast recipe. You can do it um, as an entree, do bigger pieces, or just do it as you know, chicken fingers and do smaller pieces, whatever, um, whatever works for you. I'm just going to get the oil heated on our pan again so that will be ready for us. Um, in a minute, turn that there, here. Um, I also want to show you the meat, I'm show them the piers. So our piers are starting to boil. So now I'm going to turn it down. It smells really delicious. You smell the cloves, you smell the cinnamon. I'm going to turn them over so they get nicely red on both sides and um, now it's on a low heat and it's just going to sit and cook for a while and basically you want it to be you want the pears to be soft 
um, not like crumbling soft. You still want them to, you know, have their nice shape, but you want them to be soft. Anyways, onto our chicken. So over here, I have um, prepared chicken pieces of chicken. I I uh, um, I butterfly them, and then so I have pieces like this. So they're nice sized pieces, not too big, not too small, but nice portion sized pieces. So I'm gonna coat the chicken in some um, potato starch. Manischewitz, of course. We need good Manischewitz potato starch. Publix is well stocked. Have no fear. Um, I do have a feeling though that I did not actually put on the timer on my little cheesecake, so I'm gonna check on them for a minute. <laughs> And here they are. The oven was actually set to broil by accident, so that's why they got a little too dark on the top. But, Oopsies. but here they are. Um, of course, it definitely helps to get nice little baking cups in whatever color your, um, you know, your your serving your your table are. But I'll talk a little bit more about how you can serve that um, in a little bit. Again, the oven was accidentally set to broil, and that's why you have a dark crust. Usually, they're not nice. Okay, so we have our Manischewitz um, potato starch, staple of Pesach, right? And I'm just going to pour some into the bag. No need to measure. Takes too much time. I'm going to get my salt. I'll bring it back. I'm going to get my salt. Get my pepper. Put some salt in to my bag, put some pepper in as well, and drop my chicken pieces straight into the bag. Just like that. I'm going to do and zip it up and shake it all up. And this way, first of all, it's so much more fun. Then dipping pieces one by one. I don't know, there's something about dipping pieces one by one that just gets on my nerves. So this is a fun way, let up some frustration, and all your chicken pieces are nicely coated. But that's the thing. Um, next I have over here, I prepared in advance, I, I just beat up some, um, some eggs, and add up some eggs to coat it. Also with some salt and pepper. Um, I think that's important. You need the layers of flavor to each one. You grab a touch of water to make it a little bit more um, moist. And I'm going to just drop my chicken pieces right in here. Now here comes the exciting part that makes this recipe really delicious. Because of course it's paced off and we cannot use breadcrumbs um, or cornflake crumbs or any of those kind of stuff. So what we use, and which is really, really delicious, is almond. That's what we're going to crust this in. So right over here in a bowl, I have um, prepared from before whole almonds. Um, just I, I kind of just um, um, blend, gr uh, grinded them, blended them, whatever you want to call it, in the food processor. So I just got regular whole almonds, just like that. Um, stuck them in the food processor. I took, I started with two cups of whole almonds um, and I pureed them just like that. The reason why um, I think these are good to use is because they're really, really flavorful, more so than the sliced ones or the sliver ones or anything like that. We also um, have the custom not to use processed food. So here, doing this on my own is, you know, unprocessed. So next I'm gonna take my almonds, put it into a new clean Ziploc and Take my chicken and put them in here one by one. So I have my bag. So it depends how much patience you have. If you have a lot of patience, do it one by one. If you don't, like me, then you do it all at the same time. This is also a great job for kids. Some of you love to do this and they really are very good at it. They do a great job. They even know how to fry it, which is really awesome. Okay, so we have all our chicken pieces in here now. Wash my face. And again, we have my almonds. You saw how they were, you know, chopped. Not too fine. We still have pieces, but they're nicely chopped. So I have that over here. 
Huh? It's a shake. Really, really delicious. And I'm going to take that back here to my frying pan. I just use the same, same frying pan as the onions. That's why you have a little bit in there, but really, technically, you just use a fresh frying pan. And um, I take my chicken, make sure it's nice and crusted, and just fry them up. A few minutes on each side. And of course, the almonds get really nice and toasted. And you have a nice crusted almond. If I did it individually, it will be crusted better. So I'll just do one. I'll sit down like that. There we go. I'm not going to do too many now. I'll fry the rest up later. But you want to just um, coat them with the almonds as much or as little as you like. Um, I have done in the past a combination of almonds and walnuts. So that's why I had in the house. But I prefer just almonds. There's just something nice about it. They taste really delicious, all fried up. And one last piece in there in the corner. And there we go. Of course, you can serve this on its own. You can serve it with a nice little sauce on the side. Um, either one. Just going to leave it there for a couple of minutes um, and let those almonds fry up. Let me wash my hands a minute and then I'll show you what we'll do. Okay, so now we have our um, now we have our little our little cheese cups, and there's different ways you can serve this. The way that I'm going to do it today is I'm going to melt some chocolate, and I'm going to drizzle some chocolate up on the top, so we have a nice chocolate cheese um, dessert. But if you don't like chocolate or you don't use chocolate on pizza or whatever it is, you can just put some fresh berries. Um, you can also make like a strawberry sauce um, or something like that, and be really 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 delicious. So I'm going to get some chocolate chips going over here. I'll just put some into my bowl just a little bit. I don't have that much going on. And just stick them into the microwave. Um, over there. So we're going to just let that in the microwave on 30 second interval and then take it out and mix it so that it gets, um, you know, really, really nice and, and soft. And I'm just going to flip those chicken in a minute. So we have our pears here in the back. They're just on a really slow boil. You probably can't even see it from, um, you know, from where you are. But we're just going to let it sit and boil. Take out our chocolate chip and give them a mix. Just starting to melt a little bit. Put them back in. After the second again. Um, so these are coming along really nicely. You see they're developing a really nice crust. I'm going to leave it for another minute, but it's, even though it's not covering every single, um, you know, every single area, somehow it all creates a nice crusty layer because you also have the, you also, whoops, you also have the, um, the whatchamacallit, the, the potato stuff, which also, you know, adds to the crust. So don't worry if every single little part of your, Chicken is not covered. Okay, then we're gonna drop our chips. Nice and thick. I do not put, you know, put any anything else in it because I want a nice thick chocolate topping. And I'll show you over here. We have our little, and I'm just gonna put a nice Amount of chocolate on the top over there, and a nice amount of chocolate over there. And then either you can add more chocolate or you kind of just tap it out so the chocolate spreads nicely to all the area, just like that. So keep on tapping it out, make it so you've got more chocolate. Of course, you can never have 
too much chocolate. And there we go. And um, you want to chill this so it really has a nice, you know, cheesecake feeling, and you have your chocolate, and, and you won't even realize that it's kosher for pesa. Really, really yum. Uh, so this is probably about a minute, and chicken's almost done over here. Um, even though the pears are not done, I'm going to take one out and show you, um, you know, how you can serve it in a little, in a little bowl. So this one is okay. Here we go. Um, the color is not yet here because because it did not. Um, chicken. What? The chicken? The chicken? No, it's the steam of the chicken. But anyways, the pears are not ready. They're going to have a while. But basically, the idea is to serve it single in a single um, dish, just like that, and it'll have a beautiful, beautiful red color when it's done. And again, it smells really, really divine. Another benefit is that the cinnamon kind of obliterates the frying smell. And a lot of us, you know, fry a lot of pizza, so that's a good trick to get that frying smell in the top. But anyway, there is our chicken. Really, really delicious. And the almonds are going to be really divine I'm covering chicken over there. So I'm going to turn this off because I don't want any more burning smell in the house. Um, but that's it. We have our filter fish, our chopped liver, we have our mango salsa, we have our little cheese, chocolate cheese cups, our pears, and our chicken. And I so, so wish that you would all be able to actually taste it because it tastes delicious. Huh? Um, but even though we're not physically together, I want to say l'chaim to all of you, and wish you all a wonderful, wonderful Pesach. Um, this Pesach, although right now it seems like we're all going to be by ourselves, things can change in a blink of an eye, and I, I still hope and pray that um, I'll be together. But you can all get a glass of wine. I'm sure all of you have some in the house, I know. Under these circumstances, you have them. So get a glass of wine. And let's all toast each other, wish each other a wonderful, wonderful month of Nissan, a month of redemption, that we should all be singing and dancing together with our tambourines out of this situation, out of this exile, and all celebrate Passover together in Jerusalem. So l'chaim to all of you. Um, if you need anything, please, please let us know. If anybody needs food and they're scared to go out of their homes or need groceries or whatever it is, um, we'd be more than happy to help you in any way that you need. So please, please reach out. The whole community is here. We're in this together. We're all supporting each other. And um, l'chaim to the l'chaim to good health and healing for the entire, entire world. Anybody who needs a refor shalema should be speedily healed. L'chaim. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Hey, Rona. Hi, this is Rebecca. Hi, everybody. This is some fun. Hi, it's Terry. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. For you. I'm good. How is the family? You look wonderful. The baby's adorable. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you to you and the rabbi. This is this has been great. And the classes every night has been great. I'm going to leave the meeting. I think Stephanie. Oh. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where where are you? I don't see you. Thank you. Oh, don't be so shy. Thank you, thank you. Love to see you. Marsha's still on mute. Gabriel set it up. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Hi, ladies. I'm going to get on here. Hi, Jackie. Hi, everyone. Jackie, I miss you. Thank you so much. Early, you're on, you're on mute. Hi, hi, everybody. It's so great seeing you all. How is Bracha doing? She's doing, she's doing great. Baruch Hashem. How many pounds, Baliyah and Hara? Hi, Rabbi. Hey, Robin. Oh, how are you? Good to see everybody. Wonderful. Um, how much does, how much hey, Susan, does Susan, how are you? I'm good here. To see you. Will you send us the recipes? Yes, I'm going to email out the recipes. It's Correct. probably going to take me a couple of days just to get them all typed out. Okay. I'm kind great. of busy during the day monitoring everybody's Google calendars and Zoom schedules. Um, it's very hectic, but thank God we are doing well. Uh, finding this week a lot smoother than last week. Last week was a big adjustment, but now we seem to be getting into a routine of, you know, how much does learning Brooke something away? And, you know, getting along. Thank God. Hi, Mary Beth. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Hi, Joan. Thank how are you doing? Con, I have a question. Hey, Heath. Question. Heath, Can I can't hear you. Oh, um, can, can you hear me now? Yes, now I hear you, yeah. Can we pick up the recipe cards at the shul? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to email them. I'm going to email them out. Okay. Email is uh, the cleanest, most sanitary way, right? <laughs> so we're going to email them out to everybody. And this way, wherever you are, um, you can get the recipes. And nobody has to worry about coming out of their house, right, um, to get them. Yeah, we should do a minion like this. this will a minion. Be <laughs> so I, think that, I think that Friday night before Shab starts, Yankee is going to do um, a little, um, you know, Zoom Kabbalah Shabbos together before candle lighting so that we can still see each other. So stay tuned for that because I think he wants to do that, that this week. All right. Thank you, Robinson. You're very Thank welcome. You. Heath, I'm so glad you're able to Questions. join. Thank I, I you so much, Khan. You're very welcome, Rebecca. It's good to see you. How much, send me, how much does Bracha weigh? <laughs> um, so Bracha is just about eight pounds now. Last oh, time I called oh, Bracha. Oh. Yeah, thank God. Oh, yeah, last oh, time I oh. the doctor, she was 7'10". So by oh. now, I'm assuming she's eight pounds. Oh, um, and she's become a lot more responsive. Like she really smiles and make no, makes noises. And, uh -huh. you know, so thank God. It's really exciting to see, her, see her developing well and... You know, really, really, really wonderful. Thank God. Oh, uh, thank God. Thank Love you. to everybody. Yeah. Have a good Love job. Love to all of you. Great it's seeing so, you all, Jack. So, so exciting to see all of your faces. It Stay you so safe. Much Stay Same safe day. to you also. Jackie, how's everybody, how's everybody holding up? Okay, I'm done. Jackie? Yes, I'm here. Hi, so nice seeing you. Where would you go? There, I saw Miriam Kanana Hari. She's a big girl. Yeah, she is 11 years old. God bless. How's Bruce? Baruch Hashem is good. He's home now. He's, they, he's actually working in Connecticut, but he's home, he's home right now. And it's Bruce's, whole it's Bruce's 50th birthday. Happy birthday, Bruce. Thank you so much. He went upstairs already. Oh, okay. Hannah, uh, when are we going to back to Torah and tea? Well, I'm ready to go back, but I don't know what the rest of the world is right now. I know. I know. Yeah. But let's hope, let's stay positive. Hopefully after Pesach, we can exactly. you know, resume some normal um, life. 
And if we could, then we'll, we will restart to R&P, God willing. Uh, Maine, or we'll do it virtual. We'll do it on That's Zoom. true. That's true. We could do that. Virtual, the new way to go. That's right. Virtual. That's right. Yes, we, we definitely could do that. That's a good idea. Okay. Thank you. Love to everybody. All Love right. to you, Love too. You all. Love you all. To pay Love to you all. Bye. Bye. Hi, Robin. How Hi. You been? How Susan, how are you doing in New Jersey? We're, we're the epicenter. Teaneck is really... <laughs> wow. Is really uh, badly hit. Yes. Yeah. We're staying in our house. Wow. Well, you have what you have need for all Pesach? Of us, all of us. Most, the only thing we don't have is the only thing I didn't get is crane. Everything else uh -huh. I got. Oh, good. Great. Great. Right. We're, we're, the kosher supermarkets have been good. But we, we ordered online. Uh huh. So you get everything delivered. That's good. Yes. Good. Thank God. Robin, how are you? Doing great, thanks. So good to see you. Awesome, good to see you too. Yeah, and how I got this to work. <laughs> Yay! How are the twins? Yay. Right? How is the twins? They're doing great, thank you. God bless. They're seven God. months old, thank you. I wish I can get to see them, but in the future. Of course, right. of course virtual, virtual. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's so good to see everybody here. Happy yes. Pesach, everybody. Happy Pesach, happy Pesach. Happy Pesach. Happy Pesach. Everybody Pesach. stay safe. You too. Amen. If you need anything, you. just shout out. We're here. If you don't want to go out, let us know. We'll, we're, we're Thank you, Hannah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Say the plates. I'll be in touch with the rabbi. Okay. Yeah, we will have those. Like yes. Exactly. Yankee organized with the caterer to have exactly. individual um, meals and Seder plates. Um, you know, so you don't have to run around and get stuff. You can just come and pick it up or, you know, try to have it delivered if we could. And, Fabulous. Um, and yeah, this way it'll hopefully allow everybody to celebrate Pesach safely. Absolutely. Hey, wow. Esther, how are you? Lisha not have her arm outside the house. What? Lisha not have her arm outside the house. <laughs> Hi, Esther. Nice. Uh, we're doing right. good here. Good. We're hanging in. Awesome. Yeah. How about? How about you, Esther? Wonderful. I miss you all so much. Oh, my. You want to bring her here so everyone can see her? Here, uh, Mushka's going to bring the baby here so we can see her. Oh, fabulous. Oh, oh, so. Hi, Mushka. Oh. I'm Bali Ain't Hara. <laughs> mwah, mwah, mwah. A little right to get. Look at those. Oh. Oh. He's getting so big. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. She's beautiful. Thank Julia you. Yes. Has Thank lots God. of machas. Hello, uh, bracha, bracha, bracha. Uh, you know, Lee Gansberg just had a baby Monday, a girl. Mazel tov. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, Gansberg, Lee, Rabbi Schneer's wife. Beautiful. But is her beautiful. name. Nice, very nice. Yeah, well, we she only share for zero yes. solos. Amen, amen, so, exactly. Amen. Best regards, Colt. Yes. Too. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. All the best. Bye. Love you all. Bye bye. Take care. You take, take care, you care Hannah. You're the best, Hannah. Mm -hmm.